All right, so last month I did a garden tour and I kind of was not sure if it was something you guys would be interested in, but so many of you were, and many of you requested that I do another one um, and that maybe I continue to do them. So I figured what would probably make the most sense would be to maybe do a monthly garden tour, um, especially because I, like I said in the last video, not a gardening expert. In fact, I'm as far from that as you can get. A gardening novice, if you will. Um, and I am sad to report that this uh, month's garden tour is going, oh, I hear the thunder. We're gonna have to hurry. This month's garden tour is going to be sad because my poor garden has taken quite the hit um, this month. I went out of town for a number of days and I left very explicit watering instructions and they were followed to a T. Unfortunately, I did not account for the fact that the weather report showed no rain while I was gone, when in fact it did rain every single day, and my dear sweet family followed my watering instructions to a T. So long story short, as you might imagine, my garden got overwatered a lot. So not only have I pulled some things, which I'm gonna show you, I've already harvested some things. I've got some things that I'm really just limping along right now, um, trying to get them to the point that I can harvest or just pull the plant. Um, I'm, but I'm gonna show you guys. So I've got some seeds going in the garage and then we did some land clearing for a future orchard and larger garden space. So I'm gonna show you guys all of that. I'm gonna quit blabbing on the front end of this video. Let's go ahead and jump into the garden tour before this storm comes and I am soaking wet while trying to film this. All right, so here's some exciting news. Let's start outside the garden over here and I'll show you guys my corn. It is coming up nicely. Uh, this is the, I think I mentioned this before, but it's a Fiesta corn um, and I'm excited. This is my first time ever growing corn. I mean, it's my first time growing much of anything, but definitely my first time growing corn. So hopefully this will yield some pretty Fiesta corn that I just plan to use for fall decorating. And then next year I will do crops of corn for eating. I've got lots of good corn seeds for that. And then out here in this planter, this is my second crop of dahlias. Um, I'll show you the cut flower garden, but it really did not produce much of anything. And so I had some more tubers and I decided to plant those up in a raised bed because my fear was that it was a soil issue in the cut flower garden. So I decided to try it out in a raised bed and I think I must be right because as you can see, they're doing much better in this raised bed. They started coming up from the ground within a couple of days and they've just grown extremely well. Obviously no flowers yet, but I'm much more hopeful for the future of these dahlias. And you can just see that everything's getting a little uh, crispified, not looking its greatest. Uh, it's just this, you know, we had multiple days this past week where it was 100 degrees and no rain and despite watering and everything, it's just, it's hard. The plants have really struggled. Uh, my strawberries down here, not really doing much. They were doing pretty good, but not so much right now. These are my red fingerling potatoes, which I'm about ready to go ahead and harvest all of my potatoes. I harvested, let me just show you over here. I harvested one of the bags just to kind of see where they were at and they looked pretty good. They were still a little small, so I decided to leave these other four bags for, give them another like two weeks. So probably next week, especially because we've got more rain this week so I'm gonna let the rain come and then give them a few days to really dry out and then I will go ahead and harvest these potatoes same goes for the red potatoes they have really just gone bananas just completely taken over the garden this plant got really out of control like this leaning this way so I kind of pushed everything that way um, so it wouldn't it strangled out my chamomile and stuff right here but that's all right so all of my herbs are still doing really well um, we have been eating off of these and harvesting from them for the chicken coop and for just us for eating and they are just producing like crazy so I'm super pleased with those got some snacking peppers growing in down there so these these are all doing really well. Same thing over here with my bell peppers. Oh, that is a giant grasshopper. No, is that a praying mantis? I can't quite tell from here, but there is a giant green bug on there. Um, but yeah, everything's doing well there. You see my little flutterby? 
Hello, Flutterby. Oh, hello, hello, hello. He says, get away from my flowers. Um, so yeah, my flowers over here are still doing well. My marigolds are doing very well. Now my pumpkins, pretty much done. I was giving this one a little bit more time, but I'm gonna go ahead and pull these and cure them, hopefully, um, so that we can have them for fall decorating and everything. So um, I was kind of hoping we'd get more than four pumpkins, but I did only plant one, so I feel like I, you know, lower my expectations a bit, but, and they're relatively small, so that's okay. Again, I'm just learning as I go. I've realized so far so many mistakes that I made in this garden this year that hopefully I will not uh, make again next year. I have better ideas of planting, better ideas of how things grow and how much they take over. Um, so I've definitely planted some things in the wrong spot out here that I need to change its location next time I plant it, that sort of thing. So I'm just learning as I grow. Ha, 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 right? Okay, here we go. So I did harvest my onions. They are drying out in the garage, um, but I did harvest onions and they were okay. I definitely got some decent sized ones, but also some that were really small. So I won't say I'm disappointed with the onion harvest, but definitely hoping I can do better next year. And then look at this little cutie. Got this at the farmer's market, this little peppers tree. And they're all just like multicolored, hot, hot, spicy peppers. Um, but it's beautiful. It looks like a little like tree with Christmas lights on it or something. It's so cute. Uh, my dahlias over here, I just deadheaded a bunch, so there's not really much um, on there right now, but these have just continued to do well. I've been very diligent about deadheading, and uh, the plants have really just kept producing tons of flowers. Uh, we've got my lime tree over here, still doing and growing well. Obviously, it's it's a new baby plant, so it's uh, I don't expect any, obviously, like actual fruit off of it right now, but it's growing and doing well strawberries doing okay i'm definitely dealing with a lot of the berries rotting before we ever get a chance to pick them so i think i'm going to do a different location something different uh next year but i don't know it's just it's hard to say i don't know if it's pests getting to them and making them rot but i feel like we seem to always miss out on the strawberries before they start to rot or pests get to them. So I'm not really sure what to do about that just yet. And you can see what's missing here is where I had the melons and what appeared to be a cucumber plant growing up with them. And I did in fact discover that that's exactly what happened. I don't know if it was cross pollination or what, but there were cucumbers cucumber vines growing cucumbers up mixed in with the melons and unfortunately when everything got over watered all of my melons split so they just couldn't handle that much water and the melons split every fruit that was set on the vine the vines were um, all like rotted uh, from too much water so i just ended up pulling that whole plant and sadly we did not get any melons i guess we'll keep going this way so my sweet potatoes are really taking over. I think that I read that you can go ahead and take some of the leaves off, that that won't hurt the sweet potatoes that are growing underneath. Um, and I have been able to identify the um, pest that is giving me trouble here, and it is wireworms from what I understand. So I have looked up a few different treatments for that and I'm gonna give it a give it a whirl, give it a go. Uh, there's still lots of good green leaves on here, but you can see that the wire worms have gotten a hold of some of them and just really done a number on them. Um, more marigolds over here, but my spaghetti squash, there's one on the other side that's um, rotted and not doing well. This is the last one and you can see the plant itself is spent. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull that guy. So I've got a bunch of things that I've gotta harvest and then pull the plant. Uh, my cherry tomatoes, we have just been eating off of this thing like crazy. So there's some that are ready to pick. We've got a few more, well, quite a few more new little green cherry tomatoes growing on there right now. Um, but I've been, this plant was really easy this year. Um, and my tomatoes, well, again, while I was gone, these things got attacked by hornworms. So when I got back, we had to have a little hornworm party. And incidentally, that party involved the chickens. So 
We took the hornworms off the plant and sentenced them to death by chicken. And um, they didn't get a last meal. No one read them their rights, but unfortunately they had to go to the chicken gulag. So they, I haven't seen any more on here. I've been very, very diligent about checking and using my um, pest control sprays and stuff like that. And my tomatoes have been producing again, which is great. I have also been picking the tomatoes basically like when they look like this. Um, not waiting till they really turn red, kind of waiting till they turn orange and then going ahead and picking them and letting them finish getting ripe inside the house. And that has helped to prevent the cracking and pests from getting to the tomatoes um, when I go ahead and pull them a little bit earlier and let them finish uh, ripening in the house. So someone, I think I read that online somewhere and I was like, okay, I'll give it a whirl and it worked out. So I'm happy that I did that. Chickens found some kind of bug. They're all fighting over it over there. <laughs> they are so funny. And then my zucchini. Man, this thing cranked out so many zucchinis. All these plants, they did so well. We got so many zucchini off of them, but they are no longer producing anything. There's not really any more flowers on them. So I do think I'm gonna have to go ahead and pull these and they have been sort of taken over by squash bugs as well. And despite my best efforts to spray and try to take care of those, it's just nothing is growing anymore at all. We haven't gotten zucchini off of this thing in a couple weeks. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull those. I did pull um, the cucumbers that we had here because they just, again, the same thing. They seem to have gotten overwatered. Something was just eating them up and it was not doing well at all and I could not hobble it along any longer. So I pulled that and then ended up planting two new zucchini plants right here and growing them out that way um, to keep them from intermingling with the watermelon. So yeah, hopefully we'll still be able to get some more cucumbers before the season ends. So that's been growing nicely and doing well. Um, and I'll show you guys the seedling starts I have in there. But my watermelons, this was a sad loss for me because we I had about 10 fruit set on the vine and when I came back, almost all of them were split open from overwatering. So I've got one down there that I'm gonna go ahead and pull that is ready. This one is ready. So I'm gonna take those two and then I had this one in a bag growing, it's died. That one has died. Um, that one still might be growing, so I'm not gonna pull the whole plant yet. Oh, I've got another one down there that's that's still, that's still uh, kicking. I don't know if you can see it back there, but it's still chugging along. So I'll hopefully end up getting just a few watermelons out of this bad boy, but it's really taken a beating, and I am sad about it because I was so looking forward to the watermelons. And when I came home and saw that they were all split open, I was like, no, but you live and you learn, you know, what can you do? Same thing over here with this sweet potato, uh, just, just growing like crazy, uh, still lots of good green leaves on it, but you can see where the pests are really doing a number on it. So I'm hoping I can mitigate the problem here and deal with pest control and not lose all of my sweet potatoes. Um, I don't know if I showed that or not. I don't think I did, but I did plant some flower seeds over here. When I pulled our lettuce, um, I planted some flower seeds here. So some zinnias are coming up right there, which is fun. And my favorite container is still kick in it's still doing pretty well over here so hopefully I'll still get a few more weeks out of this this has just been my favorite of all the flowers and containers I planted I've loved this one so much and then in my troughs you can see I did some marigolds from seed and they're doing well and then my uh, raspberries are you know not producing any fruit but they're still alive and growing which is great my poor blueberry, the goat got to this one. So it's obviously, it's not, it hasn't killed the plant, but there's no berries from that this year, obviously. <laughs> um, so hopefully we'll get some blueberries out of these guys next year, but marigolds have come up and I'm really anxious. I'll show you guys with the new spot of, of land that we cleared, how we're gonna eventually move all this stuff up there and out of goat getting range. And this is the one that makes me sad. Um, this was supposed to be the cut flower garden. Nothing at all came up on this side over here, nothing. 
And then I do have three dahlias that came up right here and one that came up down here. So I'm pretty sad about that. I planted a ton of tubers in here and I just think our sandy soil just did not do well. Um, as you can see the difference in these plants from the ones that are in the trough over there. These are just on the struggle bus, you know. But the yarrow is coming in nicely, though I don't think I can take too much pride in that because as I understand it, yarrow can survive just about anything. Um, <laughs> and some of my other plants are still, they're still doing well. They're still surviving and all of that, but definitely, I, I don't know, I just don't feel like growing nearly as fast or doing as well as I would have expected, and I've been fertilizing and doing flower food, and it just doesn't seem to be helping, so I have a feeling it is the soil, considering everything in the garden is in raised beds. This is the only thing I've really tried to do directly in the ground, and it's just not doing fantastic. I'll show you guys this because I think it's hilarious. <laughs> My hydrangea that I love so much, look at this. There's nothing on the bottom. That was in goat getting territory where she really did a number on that. And then I noticed one day that it started blooming just up at the top. That's basically where the goat can't reach. So everything below is dead, <laughs> but up here, beautiful hydrangea. So don't worry, we're still working on a good permanent fix for the goat problem, um, but <laughs> for the time being we'll just enjoy these hydrangea blooms and pretend it's like a hydrangea tree now out here in the garage you can see where I have started seeds well I started them in my office and then moved them out here unfortunately this was not as easy as I had hoped it would be and quite a few of my little seedlings have gotten very very leggy so um, you can see these here and these here just not doing fantastic. I think these are doing okay and some of the others in the back are doing okay but I need to raise these up and lower the lights and kind of re reconfigure the situation we have going here because I didn't do it correctly. Um, so I am going to start a new tray and do some new spinach and lettuce um, and try again because I just don't know that these are are going to make it, which is sad. You live and you learn, and as much as I read instructions and try to figure out what I'm doing before I start, sometimes I still just make mistakes. Sometimes I don't entirely understand exactly what I'm supposed to do, or it's not really clear, and it just doesn't come out the way that I had hoped. But thank goodness, all I can say is thank goodness that we're not requiring this food for survival right now. <laughs> Thank goodness this is just a good time for me to learn how to grow things and my family's ability to survive does not rely on my ability to start seeds. All right, so this is the land that we recently had cleared uh, for hopefully a future orchard and a garden space. I'm really hoping to plant more things out here like watermelons and pumpkins and just things that kind of grow wild and uh, need a lot of space. We also, you can't really see it, but there is a, a through space behind that big old tractor where I'm kind of pointing to it now, where we're gonna move our compost to. So this land is just, I mean, it needs a lot of work. We've had it cleared and now comes the arduous process of mapping it all out, figuring out where things are gonna go. That is a, you know, through the fall and into the spring project. It's not anything we're trying to get done right now but it is in the plans. So if you've got any ideas, leave them in the comments. All right guys, I hope you enjoyed our July garden tour. I'm excited to start planting some fall crops and some fall flowers. It's just, I'm, I'm sad seeing how the heat, just the 100 degree weather has just destroyed so many things and I am ready for better weather to be able to grow some things that hopefully don't just struggle and die in the intense heat. So I'm looking forward to the fall garden and uh, already thinking and planning ahead for next year's spring garden, you know? It's my life now, I guess. Not sad about it. That's it for today's video, y'all, and I'll see you guys again very soon. I know it's been a while Since we've kissed Or even since I've seen you And once again we went too long Without talking So 